Majjimanikaya, the division of the lion's roar, Sihanadavagga, Sutta number 11, Chula Sihanada Sutta, Shorter Discourse on the Lion's Roar. Thus have I heard. On one occasion the Blessed One was living at Savati in Jeta's grove, Anatapindika's park. There he addressed the bhikkhus thus, Bhikkhus, Venerable Sir, they replied. The Blessed One said this, Bhikkhus, only here is there a recluse, only here a second recluse, only here a third recluse, only here a fourth recluse. The doctrines of others are devoid of recluses. That is how you should rightly roar your lion's roar. It is possible, because that wanderers of other sects might ask, but on the strength of what argument, or with the support of what authority, do the Venerable Ones say thus? Wanderers of other sects who ask thus may be answered in this way. Friends, four things have been declared to us by the Blessed One, who knows and sees, accomplished and fully awakened. On seeing these in ourselves we say thus, Only here is there a recluse, only here a second recluse, only here a third recluse, only here a fourth recluse. The doctrines of others are devoid of recluses. What are the four? We have the confidence in the teacher. We have confidence in the Dhamma. We have fulfilled the precepts, and our companions in the Dhamma are dear and agreeable to us, whether they are laymen or those gone forth. These are the four things declared to us by the Blessed One, who knows and sees, accomplished and fully awakened, on seeing which, in ourselves, we say as we do. It is possible, because that wanderers of other sects might say thus, Friends, we too have confidence in the teacher, that is, in our teacher. We have confidence in the Dhamma, that is, in our Dhamma. We too have fulfilled the precepts, that is, our precepts. And our companions in the Dhamma are dear and agreeable to us, too, whether they are laymen or those gone forth. What is the distinction here, friends? What is the variance? What is the difference between you and us? Wanderers of other sects who ask thus may be answered in this way. How then, friends, is the goal one or many? Answering rightly, the wanderers of other sects would answer thus. Friends, the goal is one, not many. But, friends, is that goal for one affected by lust or free from lust? Answering rightly, the wanderers of other sects would answer thus, Friends, that goal is for one free from lust, not one affected by lust. But, friends, is that goal for one affected by hate or free from hate? Answering rightly, they would answer, friends, that goal is for one free from hate, not one affected by hate. But, friends, is that goal for one affected by delusion or free from delusion? Answering rightly, they would answer, friends, that goal is for one free from delusion, not for one affected by delusion. But, friends, is that goal for one affected by craving or free from craving? Answering rightly, they would answer, Friends, that goal is for one free from craving, not for one affected by craving. But, friends, is that goal for one affected by clinging or free from clinging? Answering rightly, they would answer, Friends, 
That goal is for one free from clinging, not for one affected by clinging. But friends, is that goal for one who has vision or for one without vision? Answering rightly, they would answer, Friends, that goal is for one with vision, not for one without vision. But friends, is that goal for one who favors and opposes or for one who does not favor and oppose? Answering rightly, they would answer, Friends, that goal is for one who does not favor and oppose, not for one who favors and opposes. But friends, is that goal for one who delights in and enjoys proliferation, or for one who does not delight in and enjoy pl proliferation? Answering rightly, they would answer, friends, that goal is for one who does not delight in and enjoy proliferation, not for one who delights in and enjoys proliferation. Bhikkhus, there are these two views, the view of being and the view of non-being. Any recluses or Brahmins who rely on the view of being adopt the view of being, accept the view of being, are opposed to the view of non-being. Any recluses or Brahmins who rely on the view of non-being adopt the view of non-being, accept the view of non-being, and are opposed to the view of being. Any recluses or Brahmins who do not understand as they actually are the origin, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in the case of these two views are affected by lust, affected by hate, affected by delusion, affected by craving, affected by clinging, without vision, given to favoring and opposing, and they delight in and enjoy proliferation. They are not freed from birth, aging, and death, from sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair, they are not freed from suffering, I say. Any recluses or Brahmins who understand, as they actually are, the origin, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in the case of these two views are without lust, without hate, without delusion, without craving, without clinging, with vision, not given to favoring and opposing, and they do not delight in and enjoy proliferation. They are freed from birth, aging, and death, from sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. They are freed from suffering, I say. Because there are these four kinds of clinging. What for? Clinging to sensual pleasures, clinging to views, clinging to rites and rituals, and clinging to a doctrine of self. Though certain recluses and Brahmins claim to propound the full understanding of all kinds of clinging, they do not completely describe the full understanding of all kinds of clinging. They describe the full understanding of clinging to sensual pleasures without describing the full understanding of clinging to views clinging to rites and rituals, and clinging to a doctrine of self. Why is that? Those good recluses and Brahmins do not understand these three instances of clinging as they actually are. Therefore, though they claim to propound the full understanding of all kinds of clinging, they describe only the full understanding of clinging to sensual pleasures without describing the full understanding of clinging to views, clinging to rites and rituals, and clinging to a doctrine of self. Though certain recluses and Brahmins claim to propound the full understanding of all kinds of clinging, they do not completely describe the full understanding of all kinds of clinging. They describe the full understanding of clinging to sensual pleasures and clinging to views without describing the full understanding of clinging to rites and rituals and clinging to a doctrine of self. 
Why is that? They do not understand two instances of clinging as they actually are. Therefore, they describe only the full understanding of clinging to sensual pleasures and clinging to views without describing the full understanding of clinging to rites and rituals and clinging to a doctrine of self. Though certain recluses and Brahmins claim to propound the full understanding of all kinds of clinging, they do not completely describe the full understanding of all kinds of clinging. They describe the full understanding of clinging to sensual pleasures, clinging to views, and clinging to rites and rituals without describing the full understanding of clinging to a doctrine of self. They do not understand one instance of clinging as it actually is. Therefore, they describe only the full understanding of clinging to sensual pleasures, clinging to views, and clinging to rites and rituals, without describing the full understanding of clinging to a doctrine of self. Bhikkhus, in such a dhamma and discipline as that, it is plain that confidence in the teacher is not rightly directed. That confidence in the Dhamma is not rightly directed. That fulfillment of the precepts is not rightly directed. And that the affection among companions in the Dhamma is not rightly directed. Why is that? Because that is how it is when the Dhamma and discipline is badly proclaimed and badly expounded, unemancipating, unconducive to peace expounded by one who is not fully awakened. Bhikkhus, when a Tathagata, accomplished and fully awakened, claims to propound the full understanding of all kinds of clinging, he completely describes the full understanding of all kinds of clinging. He describes the full understanding of clinging to sensual pleasures, clinging to views, clinging to rites and rituals, and clinging to a doctrine of self. Bhikkhus, in such a dhamma and discipline as that, it is plain that confidence in the teacher is rightly directed, that confidence in the dhamma is rightly directed, that fulfillment of the precepts is rightly directed, and that the affection among companions in the dhamma is rightly directed. Why is that? Because that is how it is when the Dhamma and discipline is well proclaimed and well expounded, emancipating, conducive to peace, expounded by one who is fully awakened. Now, these four kinds of clinging have what as their source? What as their origin? From what are they born and produced? These four kinds of clinging have craving as their source, craving as their origin. They are born and produced by craving. Craving has what as its source? What is its origin? From what is it born and produced? Craving has feeling as its source, feeling as its origin. It is born and produced from feeling. Feeling has what as its source? What is its origin? From what is it born and produced? Feeling has contact as its source. Contact as its origin. It is born and produced from contact. Contact has what as its source? What is its origin? From what is it born and produced? Contact has the sixfold base as its source, the sixfold base as its origin. It is born and produced from the sixfold base. The sixfold base has what as its source? What is its origin? From what is it born and produced? The sixfold base has mentality and materiality as its source. 
mentality and materiality as its origin. It is born and produced from mentality and materiality. Mentality and materiality has what as its source? What is its origin? From what is it produced and born? Mentality and materiality has consciousness as its source, consciousness as its origin. It is born and produced from consciousness. Consciousness has what as its source? What is its origin? From what is it born and produced? Consciousness has the generative causes or sankharas as its source. The generative causes or sankharas as its origin. It is born and produced from the generative causes or sankharas. The generative causes have what as their source? What is their origin? From what are they born and produced? The generative causes or sankharas have ignorance as their source, ignorance as their origin. They are born and produced from ignorance. Bhikkhus, when ignorance is abandoned and true knowledge has arisen in a bhikkhu, then with the fading away of ignorance and the arising of true knowledge, he no longer clings to sensual pleasures, no longer clings to views, no longer clings to rites and rituals, no longer clings to a doctrine of self. When he does not cling, he is not agitated. When he is not agitated, he personally attains Nibbana. He understands birth is destroyed. The holy life has been lived. What had to be done has been done. There is no more coming to any state of being. That is what the Blessed One said. The bhikkhus were satisfied and delighted in the Blessed One's words.